Image generation inside ChatGPT exploded recently with 130 million users creating over 700 million images in just a single week. Finally, the image generation model is now available for developers via their API, so you can use it inside your automations, your code, and your applications. In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step step how to start using the new OpenAI image generation model in your own projects and your automations. So let's get started. All right, so this is the article which announces the new image generation model inside the API. You can take a read through this. This is available at OpenAI. And um, there's a few interesting things here. I think the most interesting thing is probably the pricing section. You can see here that the pricing for the new image generation model is roughly 0.2 cents uh, for low resolution, 0.7 for high, and 19 for higher quality images. So this gives you an idea of how much it costs, which is relatively good. And if you don't know, you can go to ChatGPT and you can create images. So this is a really high quality image generation model. You can see here, here are some example images that you can generate using the API. These are really, really high quality and you can obviously use these kind of images in your content generation. So there are many use cases for using this with NAN. You might dynamically generate a prompt and then you obviously want to generate a, an image from that prompt and then you can use that in your content. The only thing I would caution here when you're automating these things is that it does still make mistakes. So for example, the text is usually pretty well rendered, but sometimes it does still make mistakes. So you might need to run this multiple times to get an accurate output. And I think the more text you have in your image, the more likely it is to make a mistake, essentially. All right, so before we get started, we're going to need two things to use this new API. We're going to need an API key, and we're going to need to potentially verify your organization. Okay, so if we take a quick look here at the documentation, they give some sample requests for using this new API. We have a curl request here. We also have a couple of examples. We have one in Python. So you can go ahead and use the OpenAI library in Python as well. So you can see here, we're making a request to the uh, images generations endpoint. We're passing in our OpenAI API key, and then we're passing in the prompt as well. We can specify a few other bits of information here when we generate images. Notably, we can configure things like the quality. We can also pass in additional images if you want to have like a base image as your style, and then you want to generate images based on that style, you can actually pass in the image here. And there's a couple of options we have. So the size of the image, we have the quality, so we can have low, medium, or high. And then we can also have uh, the background to be transparent or opaque. One thing you'll notice with this API is it actually returns a base64 encoded JSON string. And in order to turn that into an image, which we'll see in a second, you're going to need to do some additional work. And I'll show you how to do that. So what we have here is an example of using the OpenAI API to generate an image. We're using uh, the base64 library and the OpenAI library here. We're creating a new client. We're defining our prompt to be a children's book drawing. This is just the example taken from the documentation. We're using the client to generate an image. We're using the GPT image one model. And it looks like we generated an image. So we can just go ahead and take a look at what it generated. So as you can see here, the, the image generation works well now via the Python library. You can also do this via curl in your terminal as well. So if you want to use this API, Provided you have a OpenAI API key defined in your terminal, in your environment, you can just go ahead and run this request. So let's take a look. All right, so this, this request returned successfully. I ran this request in my terminal, and you'll see what I actually got back was this gigantic JSON string. And this is essentially the image in a, uh, in a string encoded format. If you want to save this to a file, you need to modify this in some way. All right, so let's get started. So we need an API key, but then we also need to verify our organization. If you look at the documentation here, you can say you can see that it says, to ensure this model is used responsibly, you may have to complete the API organizational verification from your developer console. If you haven't done this before, it doesn't take too long, but you're going to need to provide your driver's, driver's license or some kind of identification. I did this yesterday. It took me about two minutes. It was relatively simple and easy. But if your organization is not verified, you may find that you get errors when you're calling this API. So let's take a quick look. So you can see here, this is how you uh, verify your organization. You can click on to the platform.openai endpoint here. And you can see here, I have actually already verified my organization. So I can go ahead. 
If you haven't, you will obviously need to configure this setting. The other thing you're going to need is an API key. So I'm going to create a new API key for this project and I'm going to call it YouTube. And I'm going to set it in my default project and I'm going to create my key. I'm going to copy that API key. And what we're going to do now is use this API key to build an N8N automation. All right, so let's see how we can use this API within N8N. It's actually pretty simple. We're going to start with a manual trigger and then we're going to have a set. Uh, set fields or edit fields node and what we're going to use this for is our configuration I always like to define configuration in one central place so that's what we're going to use this for here so we're going to rename this to configuration and then what we what we need to add here is our open AI API key and we're going to just paste in the value that I generated earlier and we're going to take the example here from the documentation so let's generate an image in N8N. Let's use this basic example here. Be aware of the endpoint. I think they've made a mistake in their documentation. The correct endpoint is uh, v1 slash images slash generations. Just be aware that some of the examples I was looking at earlier, they had the wrong endpoint in the documentation. So if we copy this request up to here, so we're not going to include this JQ minus R section because this is basically a way of decoding the uh, the output here. We're just going to take this section here. So we're going to copy this and we are going to click on import curl. We're going to paste it into here and we're going to click import. Uh, so you can see here, the thing we need to specify is our OpenAI API key. We have the model, which is set to GPT image dash one. And then we have a prompt you can obviously customize this prompt and do what you like. I'm just going to show you how you connect this today. And that's all we need to get started. Let's execute the previous nodes to get the API key. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our API key here. So this is the only thing you actually need to configure. So your this authorization header should be bearer, space, and then your API key that you generated earlier. So let's just go ahead and test this step. Um, actually, before we do that, let's quickly rename this to generate image. And then let's go ahead and test this step. Okay, so this response returns correctly. So we made a request to the OpenAI API to generate an image. We passed in an image generation prompt. We set the model to uh, the new GPT-1 model. And then what we got back was this base64 JSON string. So this isn't a file. And so you're going to need to manipulate this to turn it into a file. So let me quickly show you how to do that. So the next thing we're going to do is convert to file. And then we're going to click on move base64 string to file. And the base64 input field is going to be data. Sorry, it's actually going to be this base64 JSON string. So this is the input field. And then the output field is going to be data. And so let's quickly test this step. So what we're doing is we're taking this long string and we're turning it into a file. And if you click view, you can actually see the file that was now generated by the API. So now we have the file. Um, so the next thing you might want to do with this kind of automation is store that file somewhere. So for example, you might want to store it into your Google Drive. I already have a folder created. So what I'm going to do is take that image we generated, um, we're going to convert the string that came back into a file, and then we're going to store that file into Google Drive, just for an example. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click on Google Drive, and then we're going to upload a file. The input data field name, you can leave this as data. This is the field name that comes back when we convert this to a file. What you will need to do is give this a file name. So you're either going to need to pre-generate this file name somewhere or dynamically generate this file name. I'm just going to call it example.png. Um, and then obviously you want to choose where you're going to upload that to. I'm going to use my YouTube folder. And let's go ahead and test this step. You will also need to have a credential configured. Just for the sake of this uh, video, I'm going to skip over that. But you do need to connect with Google Drive. Looks like it worked successfully. So let's take a quick look in my Google Drive. And now you can see here we have example PNG. And if we hover over this, you can see this is the image that we generated previously. 
All right, so now you have everything you need inside N8N in order to generate an image, convert it into a file, and then upload and store that file somewhere. The obvious things you're going to need to change with this, um, this particular request are the prompt. So you can dynamically ingest, uh, inject any prompt you like. And if we go back to the documentation, you might also want to tweak some of the settings. So if we go back here, if we scroll down, there are some more examples at the bottom. You may also want to add in these additional fields. So you can add in size, quality, or format as well. Um, let's just give an example of how to do that. So let's add in one of these configuration options. Let's add in the, let's take a look. Let's do high quality and then let's set the size to be 1024 by 1024. So let's go ahead and configure this now just so you've got an example. So we can add some additional parameters and the parameter is going to be size and we're going to set that to 1024. I'm going to add another parameter here which is going to be quality and I'm going to set that to medium. And let's test this step again. So again, we're just using the same prompt as before. We're setting the size of the image and we're also setting the quality of the image to be medium. All right, perfect. So that looks like it worked correctly. We have the image that was generated. Let's obviously run this again, just to be sure. Let's test this step. So now we have the base64 JSON. And this image now should be a particular size. The file size is 2.1 megs. Uh, we could also change the extension as well if you wanted to. All right, so now we have the basics here. You have the basic N8N workflow. Uh, one final thing we can do just to kind of demonstrate is make the prompt dynamic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an Airtable database. And we can inject, let's have a prompt. Actually, let's have a uh, a name for our image and then a prompt. Let's call this image prompt. Um, and let's call this one poster. And then we're going to have an image prompt here. Let's just take some more examples. Um, all right, let me take some more examples here just so we have some references. Let's choose this one. Create a detailed square pixel art showing fancy work to character. Uh, let's do this one. Let's call this one pixels. And then let's just choose one more example. All right, let's take this one here, which is a like a poster. And let's call this one poster. Let's paste in the prompt here. So what we have now is we have an Airtable database. Obviously, this would be something you might generate dynamically, but we now have an image prompt. So we have a name for our file. So what we're going to do here is connect Airtable. So let's add in Airtable. We're going to search records. Or we're going to search within that table. We're going to search within OpenAI images. We're going to use table one. Uh, we're going to just pull back everything. Let's quickly test that step. All right, so we are pulling back the items from Airtable. Then we have a name for the file and we have an image prompt. So what we want to do is generate um, a bunch of images here. So let's delete this. So for each of those prompts, we're going to run it through here. So our connect in Airtable, we have our three images. Then we pass it into our configuration node. And we're going to change this generate images node. And what we're going to do is we're going to inject this prompt dynamically. So let's just run. Let's just run it up to here. All right, so we're getting the records from Airtable. We're getting our API key. And then we're going to pass it into here. And we're going to change the prompt. And we're going to make it the image prompt. So we're, we're dynamically now injecting our prompt into this image generator. We're converting it to a file. And then when we store it into Google Drive, what we can do is we can use the file name from the previous nodes. I will need to execute this. So let me just do that. All right, so this completed successfully. So we should now have our three images. So this is our first image which looks good. And then we have our second image, which again looks good. And then we have our third image, 
which yeah looks pretty good so then when we pass this into google drive what we can do is obviously now we can make the file name dynamic so rather than hard coding the file name what we can do now is pass in the the file name from the json of the previous step so we can go back to Airtable and then we can pass in the the name so if you scroll back here what we're going to do is use this as the file name um, and then we're going to add a .png extension on the end png extension so let's just quickly test this step and what this should do then is run for each of those images we're going to upload it into our google drive okay so you can see here we now have our three images that are uploaded into google drive all right, so that's it. We now have our fully working automation where we're dynamically pulling in a prompt. We're using our OpenAI API key to generate an image by calling the OpenAI endpoint. We're then converting the base64 encoded response back into a file, and then we're uploading that into Google Drive. Obviously, you, you could store this anywhere you like. Uh, then you could also, also like link to the file from an Airtable or something along those lines. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.